How's it going, guys? It is 12.46 a.m., 5th of March, Sunday, here in Japan. We have a past level question for cardio murmurs for step one, as well as internal medicine for 2CK. Uh, before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram, group my channel down below. Let's start the clip. 51-year-old man brought to emergency after severe chest pain rating to his back for the past 30 minutes. He has a history of cocaine use and hypertension. X-ray of the chest and angiography confirmed the diagnosis. Question wants to know what's most likely seen his patient. So as I said, this is a past level question. Diagnosis is clearly dissected dissecting aortic aneurysm, okay, or just aortic dissection uh, that has now ruptured, okay? And uh, the x-ray of the chest is going to show widening of the mediastinum. Aortic angiography is what they want on 2CK to confirm the diagnosis. Cocaine, hypertension, very buzzy risk factors, obviously connective tissue disorders as well. Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos increase the risk. So uh, what kind of murmur are we going to see in Aortic dissection. Let's just whip the answer choices. We'll go backwards. Choice E, pulses parvus retardus, wrong fucking answer. This refers to aortic stenosis. Okay, so unrelated. Uh, bicuspid aortic valve, most important cause, need not be Turner syndrome, uh, usually autosomal dominant, familial. And this is synonymous with slow rising pulses. Okay, pulses parvus retardus. Syncope angina dyspnea, SAD, SAD, uh, that can be buzzy for aortic stenosis as well. It's a long fucking discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, mystolic murmur, wrong answer. So this will classically also refer to aortic stenosis, okay? Pulmonic stenosis, but I mean right side murmur is more rare. Uh, so aortic stenosis, of course, upper right sternal border, second intercostal space, uh, USMLE, they don't really care about locations. You could get an aortic stenosis at the upper left sternal border. You're like, isn't that pulmonic? Yeah, but USMLE doesn't give a fuck, okay? And so there's one question I know some of you uh, who've done some of the offline MBMEs, MBMEs uh, 20 and 21 in particular, there's one question where there's a mitral regurge that's mid-systolic. I think it's an erratum, truthfully. I've made many clips talking about it. 29 out of 30 times, just put it that way. Mitra regurge would be holo systolic, or just they'll say systolic, that's it. Not mid systolic, one question. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see holo systolic murmur? Wrong answer. So, as I just said, this could apply to mitra regurge. If they say holo systolic murmur that increases with inspiration, that's tricuspid regurge. You need to know the most important cause of tricuspid regurge and US simile is pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale. Sounds extremely weird. Not pulmonic regurge, tricuspid regurge. I've made many clips on that as well. Uh, mitral regurgitation, important. I'd say the highest yield cause of MR is going to be post MI papillary muscle rupture. Okay, so we'll say do an MI hours ago or days ago. Okay, I've seen different time frames, and now all of a sudden has severe dyspnea with a new onset four and six systolic or holo systolic murmur. That's mitral regurge. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diastolic rumble following an opening snap. Wrong answer, very buzzy for mitral stenosis. You need to know 99% of mitral stenoses are due to history of rheumatic heart disease as a kid. Okay, so acutely, you have a 12 year old, let's say, with group A strep pharyngitis, goes on to get. Uh, rheumatic heart disease, that's going to be mitral regurge. Holy shit. But then the valve will scar over five, 10 years later. That same patient's going to have mitral stenosis now. So opening snap in the diastole followed by a decrescendo uh, diastolic rumble. Okay. Uh, mitral stenosis can also become symptomatic during pregnancy. That's the other important vignette. So, and that's because of the increase in plasma volume by 50% by a second trimester. So you'll have a female who um, must have had rheumatic heart disease as a kid, and she has severe dyspnea starting in second trimester, okay, crackles in the lungs. And that's going to be mitral stenosis. If she's near parturition, end of third trimester, or even postpartum, that's going to be post -car postpartum cardiomyopathy, which is a dilated cardiomyopathy, antibody mediated. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice A, decrescendo, holodiastolic murmur, correct answer. Uh, this refers to aortic regurge. So this can be described as a decrescendo holodiastolic murmur. It can be described as an early diastolic murmur. They can say a diastolic murmur that's loudest after S2, because S after S2 is when we start diastole. So that's an early diastolic murmur. So you need to know that aortic dissections can retrograde propagate toward the aortic root cause aortic root dilatation, AR. 
Okay, so if you, for example, had a Marfan syndrome, Mailer Stanlow's question, where uh, most common murmurs mitral valve prolapse and mid-systolic click, but if they gave you a diastolic murmur, early diastolic murmur, you'd be thinking, oh, does this patient have a dissection? Okay, so that's the most important cause of aortic regurg in USML8 is aortic dissection. This is going to give us bounding pulses. Okay, wide pulse pressure, big difference between the systolic and diastolic pressures. So 160 over 50, 120 over 40, bounding pulses, head bobbing. Okay, in contrast, as we talked about, aortic stenosis, slow rising pulses, pulses parvus et tardis. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.